by now you have recorded you have your two tracks per speaker you have this you have post produced that you have leveled that and basically what you've done in post production is you've created all the output files that you need in order to distribute so you have a transcript um, and I'm happy to go um, to take a closer look at how you can manage a transcript and how you can arrive at one. Um, you have your um, different audio formats, maybe an MP3, maybe um, an ARG, uh, ARG, for, uh, ARG file, um, maybe even MP4 or M4A. Um, so you have all those output files and now you need to find a way to get that on the web and to make it subscribable, so to speak. So what you want to do is you want to put it on the web somewhere, probably on some kind of server, um, where people can subscribe to um, your output files and then download them onto their devices, or usually a mobile device, um, but still sometimes you will find a, a, that people listen to your podcast through, for example, the browser. Um, so what you want to do with that um, and how do you want to do that? And it's just these, well, remember um, the, I think it's the, the second or the third slide that I showed you. Um, and I was, uh, and I said that we will take a closer look at the web feed as a construct. And that's why I brought the slide again. Um, so basically what you want to do when you produce a podcast and when you distribute it, you want to create it in a way that, that it is subscribable. And usually you do that by creating a web feed. So basically an RSS feed mostly um, that you can subscribe to and that you then can hand, can hand in elsewhere. So what you do is you have your, um, you have your output files you put them on the server, you create this RSS feed, and then this RSS feed is being used to hand it over to different kinds of platforms or different kinds of devices. So in this scenario that I put uh, that I, that I'm trying to show right here is you take your RSS feed and you create an account in this case with uh, Apple Podcasts, which um, where there's a basically, one of the or the standard catalogs of podcasts and you hand it in there so you provide some metadata you um, register you say my name is christian friedrich i have this podcast this is the rss feed this is the title this is the the description this is the website where it's um, being made accessible to to uh, people who listen to this and um, after a couple of hours and sometimes days in this case, Apple Podcasts will basically list you on their catalog of um, of podcasts um, for people to to browse and search through. I'm mentioning Apple Podcasts here quite a lot because um, I would highly recommend that you make use of that offer because um, compared to other platforms on the web, Apple Podcasts doesn't really do anything. They don't. Um, um, in, in terms of downloading or closing and fencing in the, the whole garden of podcasts that there are. Basically, they're creating a, a repertory um, catalog that basically links other podcasts. So they will link to your server and they will not download the information onto their servers, at least for the most part. And the, the audio is still downloaded from your own server in, and onto those devices. So they basically become portal. Um, it's quite different with Spotify. Uh, Spotify actually takes your um, podcasts, downloads it to their servers, and then makes that accessible to the Spotify listeners. And um, there's a, a bit of information that is being lost by that. So, for example, show notes on Spotify don't really work out well. Chapter marks don't work uh, don't work at all. Um, and also, Spotify um, allows um, for much better tracking, um, which is rather in the interest of Spotify usually than in your interest as a podcaster, to put it mildly. Also, um, they have been experimenting and they are still experimenting with targeted ads, um, which some would say is kind of one of the big pitfalls of the web. Um, Given that I'm speaking to an open to an open science community, I would at least question whether you want to use Spotify. On the other hand, um, 
lots of podcasts are being listened to by now on Spotify. That's where the audiences are. And there's a good argument for um, your podcast being on Spotify by saying, I want to be where my communities might be or where my communities are. So um, I'll, I'll leave it to you, whether you want to use and which kinds of platforms you use. My general recommendation would be that Apple Podcasts is like the standard thing that you want to use in any in any of those scenarios. Um, but there's also, a, at the beginning, I mentioned feed and panopticum.io and all those. Um, you want to register and you want to claim your own podcast there and engage with your communities there. But in terms of technical distribution, which is um, kind of the main topic of this uh, this chapter. Um, you want to create an RSS feed and you want to hand that RSS feed in at different kinds of websites. And also with the podcatching apps that I showed in the beginning, it's also um, quite easily and, efficient, uh, and efficiently um, um, doable to subscribe to an RSS feed just in, in your podcasting app and people will be able to connect to your server basically with their own mobile device and download your media data and, and all that on their device. So as I said, for example, po Apple Podcasts, but also Spotify, all you need is um, in, under, in order to be listed there, um, you need an RSS feed, you need a registration at that, um, at that specific portal and you need a little patience. Usually Spotify is quite quick, um, four to six hours usually until the podcast is published there. Um, Apple Podcasts takes a little more time between two and four days usually and your podcast will be accessible. And as I said, consider all those other platforms and networks. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I sincerely hope that you will take a closer look at them after this workshop. Um, so the the second or maybe even first question then is how do I create an RSS feed um, and how do I make show notes and all the data that comes along with a podcast uh, um, in, in addition to the mp3 how do I make that accessible and one general recommendation is if you're familiar with WordPress which I know many people are um, when when they've um, published a couple of blog posts somewhere or if, whether they run their own blog or an institutional blog, mostly and, and quite often this is run on WordPress. So um, I put a couple of links here. Um, some, some of them are basically podcasts that I have myself and some other podcasts are podcasts that, um, uh, that I would recommend listening to. Um, and they all use po uh, Podlove as a WordPress plugin to make publishing, make the publishing of podcasts um, as easy as publishing a blog post on WordPress. And um, after the initial setup, they actually um, they actually deliver on that promise quite nicely. This is an open source project that I would very much encourage you to take a look at and support if you're using it. Um, so they just, the, the pod lovers team, they also um, ha now have a podcast where you can go into the te technical nitty gritty. Um, it's called um, Pod Lovers. Um, and I highly recommend, uh, recommend it if you want to get to know the community developing this plugin and, and everything that comes along with that. There's a web player and all that. Um, but I also would encourage you to support them if you're using them um, at any um, for, for your own podcast. This still um, requires you to set up your own WordPress site and install the Podlovers plugin and set it up maybe with an FTP server sometimes, sometimes in, in more sophisticated ways. But generally, I would say that this is still half a day's work at least um, with design and everything. So if you're looking for an uh, for a more, um, let's let's call it time efficient way or an easier way to host your own podcast and you don't mind um, using a platform, um, then my first recommendation would be to take a look at Podigy. Um, this is basically um, almost like a domain hosting platform with that is specified for podcasts. So. They, if you host your podcast on Spotify uh, on on Podigy, you can um, 
on the one hand, they will help you and support you when you distribute it to all those other platforms that I mentioned. But also, um, with that comes a uh, an aphonic budget, for example. So you can do post production and then um, publish on Podigy. Um, this is also um, I'm recommending them as well because they try to engage with the podcasting communities that they work with quite nicely. Um, they have a great support when when it comes to questions and when you're not um when you don't want to to nerd out on hosting your own podcast this is basically the most um the least painful way to do so let's call it let's let's put it like that so this would be a recommendation um if you're not into hosting your own website on wordpress with podlove <laughs>